So we are talking about Mind Flares, which feature very heavily in Thandelver and below the Shattered Obelisk. Yes. Uh, why was there such a focus on Mind Flares? Well, first of all, I love Mind Flares, and I think they're really fun, fascinating, terrifying aliens whose minds humans can't comprehend because they come from an alien realm, specifically the Far Realm, canonically speaking. And so I just really like scary stories about that, that the unknown, inhuman types of creatures that are manipulating the minds of creatures that they see as lesser beings, which would be humans and humanoids and pretty much everybody who's not them. So I started out with a love of mind flares, which is weird, um, but they're cool. They're face tentacle, face tentacle guys. And I knew that Baldur's Gate 3 had mind flares heavily involved in that plot. And so I thought, wouldn't it be fun if we did an adventure that centered around mind flayers as the villains, but not necessarily just standard mind flayers, but if we put a twist on those mind flayers. And that is what this book is all about. It's about discovering the villains behind this plot to destroy Phandalin and realizing how horrifying they truly are. Yeah, and this is, if you are a mind flayer fan, this is like a feast of things to deal with. Brains, <laughs> yes. And, and also lore <laughs> as well. It's true, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited to see different mind flares that we've never seen before yep. kind of show up. Yep, uh, yep. And that's we are true. seeing some other things. Like we've got an elder brain that isn't 100% normal either as well. Uh, what Can you give me kind of the loose idea of what's happening in Phandalin with the mind flares? Yeah, absolutely. So um, it's not necessarily just a new type of mind flare that is the villain. It's three specific mind flares. And it's three specific mind flares that trace their origins to the ancient Illithid Empire that once ruled the Underdark in the Forgotten Realms. Um, these mind flares, after that empire fell, became discontented and unhappy with their lot in life and returning to other sources of, of power to try to reclaim the greatness of the Illithid Empire as they, they saw it from way back when. And uh, that coincided with the rise of a brand new power from the far realm, uh, of course that progenitor realm that the Mind Flayers are from, um, and it's a, it's a godlet, it's a new beast of lore that the Mind Flayers end up uh, worshipping after that connection with them is made and this Far Realm godlet is granting powers to these three fanatics to try to create a, a new empire of mind flayers on the, in the Forgotten Realms. So what is a godlet? And I expect this godlet um, it doesn't look like your typical god. <laughs> it does not. Oh my gosh, I want to say all the things. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> but it's, uh, so this godlet is connected to the original mind flayer god, El Sensing, for people who are really into Mind Flare lore, um, but it's not Ilsensen who no longer lives in the Far Realm. This is a godlet that uh, came from Ilsensen, still lives there, and again wants to build up uh, power and sort of overtake Ilsensen as, as the major god of the Mind Flayers and of, of all creation, really, um, from that perspective. So it's got all kinds of weird powers that it's sort of getting back to, you know, the Mind Flayer basics and not messing around with you know, this old fallen weakened empire just trying to create their own uh, sense of power and really subjugate kind of everybody that that is around there. And that's what these fanatical mind flayers are trying to, to tap into as being the agents um, of this godlet, which is a new piece of canon. Uh, it's not something that anybody will be familiar with. And it's a nice it's a nice bit of synergy that like mind flayers are top of mind right now. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3 having just come yep. out, we have a lot of mind flare shenanigans in that video game and then we get to slide right into Fandelver. Yeah, well. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You don't um, necessarily get any mind flare powers in this, uh, but you definitely are standing against mind flares that are being presented in a new and fresh way. Um, something that I hope uh, people will be excited about, even players who you know have been around and been playing with mind flares and been fighting mind flares for for uh, many, many years, uh, they will hopefully find something sort of new and fresh and uh, it's scarier than before because it's different. <laughs> That's the thing, like, not only is this a nice mind flare, you know, empire kind of, uh, like, lore dump or also how mind flares work, but we're also, like, we have ones that do not get along. It's just a lot of content in terms of, like... Yeah, this, yeah. You, you, like, you are having to think of, like, what is scary to a mind flare? Like, you've done a lot of... 
a lot of mind flare work. It's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's creating and presenting mind flayers as this complicated group of individuals who uh, have different motivations and are interested in different things or have have become in different places, essentially, um, due to the historical um, goings-ons that have affected the Forgotten Realms for many, 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 many years. So, you know, we've got groups of Mind Flayers trying to accomplish different things, and then we've got these three fanatical Mind Flayers that are trying to uh, accomplish something really super scary, and that's kind of where the horror comes in. Uh, yeah, that, the end. that art is terrifying. <laughs> It is. I hope people will be excited when they see uh, what this uh, new godlet looks like because, yeah, he's a, he's a scary guy. So what are these Mind Flayer fanatics trying to accomplish? So the Mind Flayer fanatics have got in their heads that they are the harbingers of a new Mind Flayer empire on the uh, Forgotten Realms on the Material Plane, specifically on Toril. And they are working at the behest of this new godlet who wants to command this new Illithid empire. Uh, and so their first order of business is to create a population, to create a capital for the new Mind Flayer empire on the face of Toril. And the way that they want to accomplish that, uh, the way that they're going to use the power granted to them by this godlet, is to try to enact seromorphosis, which is the process by which, using a tadpole, a mind flayer can insert that into a humanoid, and that will eventually gestate and turn them into a mind flayer, change their physicality entirely, change their brain entirely into an alien monster. And so... That in itself is very terrifying. That's something that's explored a lot in Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah. Uh, what we're doing here is a story about what happens if there is uh, an evil power that is allowing the Mind Flayers to do that remotely from deep underground or possibly another plane of existence. So without even having a tadpole. Without even having a tadpole, exactly. They are harnessing the strange evil eldritch powers of that obelisk to try to power this ritual where does an elder brain typically you know rest in mind flare culture it is usually the hub it of is like... yeah it's the hub of a specific colony of mind flares um it's the elder brain that's at the center of a community of mind flayers that uh, can see everything that each mind flayer sees um, and can dispatch orders to mind flayers and um, basically granting the powers of, of these mind flayers and all of the thoughts and everything that takes place within that area that like gets all sort of co-opted and sucked into that that older brain and it, and it is uh, sort of the brain behind the, the operation, the whole operation of mind flayers. And so it's interesting to play with what happens when that specific brain and hub gets corrupted by, um, you know, certainly not uh, an, it, it, an evil influence that isn't already there, but it's a, a different, more alien, even evil influence um, and a, a sickliness is sort of spreading out to the mind flayers that don't conform, um, you know, to this new godlet's uh, ideas. What I love about this is like, not only are you like, already mind flayers are incredibly alien to us, but you mm -hmm. found something alien to mind flayers. Yes. That is a step too far. Yes, yes, <laughs> and yeah. That, that, that kind of ramps up the scariness. Even yeah. for like, like hardcore D&D players who've been playing with mind flayers for years, which that's never been a pleasant experience. But now there's like, oh, this, but what are they afraid of? Exactly. And that's kind of what I hope that, the, that this new fresh horror comes from is that it's not only the scary mind flayers that are already alien and their aberrations that are trying to you know obliterate the minds and eat the brains of humanoids but you've got a step before that you know what are the monsters afraid of well they're even worse monsters and the things that they're trying to accomplish are even scarier you see the influence of these uh, far realm fanatics, these fanatical mind flayers from the very beginning of the adventure. And I hope that people um, are interested and excited about the detail that you'll see that's infused within the book from the very beginning. Um, there are clues that are dropped even in the early chapters uh, that are retelling that Lost Mind of Fendelver story. There are, there are clues that are dropped about goblins that have strange powers. There are strange sightings that the characters might be told about by NPCs. Uh, there's um, a goblin that they see uh, out of the corner of their eye. It looks a little bit different. Um, there are uh, evidences of 
uh, strange motivations that don't make sense for some of the other goblins the characters have interacted with so far. Um, and that is all seeds. Uh, those are all seeds that are meant to lead the characters into that sort of unsettled feeling that there's something going on in the background when they start hearing and they return to Phandalin and they understand that there have been crimes committed. Um, and uh, it turns out that some of those strange goblins who've been sighted seem to be the culprits. It's a, a slow unraveling. It's a slow burn of figuring out how bad this threat really is. Yeah, and it, it may feel like we're talking a lot about what's in this adventure, but like, it, don't worry, it gets way worse. <laughs> oh, it absolutely does. That's just the beginning. Yeah. It's just the beginning. <laughs> Why do you think people are so obsessed with mind flayers? I, 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 they are some. They are so iconic in Dungeons and Dragons. There is just something about them. They are. Um, well, mind flayers are a unique creature uh, that, of course, are specific Dungeons and Dragons creatures. So you don't necessarily see them uh, in other settings as much. But I think that they've captured people's attentions because they are. They are so alien, and they are so. Uh, they are so brutal, and they don't view any creatures that uh, are sentient as having any level of humanity or having any level um, of congruity to themselves. So I think Mind Flayers are scary, really, um, because they can, they can commit a level of, of violence that is unthinkable to anybody with any moral sense or any moral compass right so the things that mind flayers do they don't see you as equivalent to them they don't yeah. see you as whatever their version of human is they just see you as food they just see anything around them as property to be taken as um a f as a meal to be had uh and so just or that a level, potential mind flayer to be made or a potential mind flayer to be made right the, yeah. their thinking is so skewed from what any uh, normal um, sense of thinking would be that it's, it's just very scary and it's almost impossible to get into that mindset to try to understand how they work and there's no reasoning with mind flayers because they don't even consider any other creatures um, to be worthy of conversing with for the most part um, and because they are just so brutal and uh, they take and they take no prisoners and so they're just very scary villains that uh, they're irredeemably evil um, in pretty much every case and so, you know, it's something that uh, DMs can really use as a, as a boogeyman, right? Like, that mind flare's after you. There is no reasoning with it. There is no uh, trying to compromise with it. It's just going to kill you. Or you could run away or try to fight it. Or it's going to, like, experiment on you. Or, or something or, works. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the killing is the good bit. Yes. Um, they also, they love eating brains. They love eating brains. That's right. <laughs> and they also get a little bit out of that. Like sometimes they can like kind of grab onto the memories when they do so, right? Yeah, yeah. And so that that's another thing that's very scary is that intrusiveness that they can have into um, you mentally, into a human mentally, right? That there's there's no sort of internal privacy. There's no hiding uh, your fear from a mind flare. There's no hiding your secrets your secrets from a mind flare. Uh, they can do what they will. And so that level of just complete brutishness is uh, really terrifying to a lot of players, I think. And, you know, they've, they've persisted throughout media. What are some of the things that get you most excited about this project? Most excited about this project, I would say, is the ability to create um, a whole story that is what uh, The Lost Mind of Fendelford leads into and have that be something that I think will be very unexpected um, to fans. Uh, to answer the questions of what happens after Lost Mind of Fendelver and have it be so unexpected and have it uh, veer into territory that I think will be a complete surprise for our fans and to be able to tell um, that story throughout uh, the expressions of the Mind Flayers and the Far Realm connection that they've got and all of the different uh, things. It's a, it's a type of genre that I really enjoy. I really enjoy uh, that slow burn uh, horror um, ter terror of the unknown uh, escalating up into what ends up happening in this adventure and what the characters end up needing to do to to stop this horrible plot. It also like ups the stakes as to why the Far Realm is so dangerous. It does, yeah. It's one of those things that the Far Realm has always been there um, since time immemorial and has always had these alien creatures and has always produced um, you know, these uh, alien beings, but has sort of been away from the material plane. But when even just a little bit uh, of that far realm influence touches 
you know, anything on the material plane, let alone something as evil as these Mind Flayer fanatics, um, that really just underscores how that place is a no-go zone. <laughs>